Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're doing a guide for Hoodwink in uh, Dota 2. Uh, Hoodwink is a newish character, uh, kind of squishy, really just a spellcaster, and we're talking about uh, being a support in this guide. Uh, and I definitely think that's one of the preferred roles and probably where uh, Hoodwink's going to be staying here in the future. Uh, so first off, we'll kind of break this down. I'm going to go through the skills and the items and the kind of order we go through this will be the progress of the game. I've got some clips here on certain parts of the game and uh, good actions, bad actions sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So in lane, your goal as a support is to keep your uh, your core alive and harass the enemy team kind of because the and secure the, the range creep, right? So secure securing CS for your core, keeping your core alive, and maybe killing the enemy team, right? Keeping them off their CS. Uh, Hoodwink fills this. Uh, she's got really good uh, range creep secure, uh, okay harass, and a really good reliable uh, stun in lane because it requires the tree line here. So you're going to start with maxing off Acorn Shot because this is your harass. And mainly the reason you max it out is the increase in range here. You look at that that top line there, bonus attack range, 125 to 350. So uh, the way Acorn Shot works is it does your, your basic attack range plus whatever the skill does. Um, and like I said, you're really a caster, not an auto attacker, but the cool thing about Acorn Shot is it does use attack modifiers and such, and we'll get into that later with items. Uh, but like I said, the biggest thing here is we're looking at this attack range increase and the bounce count. Um, if you've uh, played Witch Doctor and have coconut bounces, same kind of thing here with Acorn Shot, except for their auto attacks. Um, and we really want to get this to max range because once it's in that that level three, level four range, it'll it'll have the same range as our bushwhack. Uh, it doesn't have it here on the tooltip, but the bushwhack range is much larger than the Acorn Shot range. And later, we're going to need both of these to have the same range so we can cast them in the same spot for good effect. And I'll, I'll get into that. But uh, first off is uh, and Max and Acorn Shot and Bushwhack's priority. And Scurry, the first point in it is the most important point uh, just because it's the moving through the trees. Um, but maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, Acorn Shot, we talked about everything I want to. I'm about to get into the video here. Um, bushwhack it's an aoe stun and the cool thing about bushwhack is it's a it's it's targeting record is a circle but you don't have to center the tree you're targeting uh in the middle of the circle it could be the tree can be anywhere in the circle and I'll, I'll try to show you some examples of that here in the first couple of clips but as long as one single tree is in that circle everyone in that circle will be pulled to that tree even if it's from one edge of the circle to the other so Keep that in mind when you're trying to target with this spell. Uh, yes, it's easiest to target to the center, but that's a bad habit to get used to. You really, the more important thing is you just want to clip one of the trees on the edge of your circle and kind of control the direction that you're pulling the enemy uh, with it. So there's a lot of finesse with this spell, and um, you're not going to see my targeting circles, which is I'm talking about it so much here because I have a quick cast on, but uh, you'll... Uh, You'll get a feel for the, the circle range and, and try to control the enemies. And let's just get into the clips. I like the clips much more than anything else. It gives me an easier talking point here. So let's go back to that game and load up these clips. Uh, Hoodwink is very squishy. Uh, Hoodwink is a spellcaster. I'm going to say that a couple times to remind people that just because we have an auto attack spell does not mean we're a right clicker. Hoodwink is all about casting your spells, staying on the edge of the fight, and since the spells are very short cooldown, uh, it's all about getting several casts of them off uh, within a fight. So first one here is at 313. Well, let's go back just a little here. So this is the... Uh, I've used a core shot to secure some range creeps, but this is a big first little skirmish we got here. So you see I got Ghanim, I go to the edge of the fight, and I wait for my spells to come back up and to be safe. And since we're early on and I have really long cooldowns, just getting some right clicks in while my Skeleton King here is alive. But the biggest thing is, I get gone on. First Spirit's like, aha, I can kill Hoodwink. And my goal is to just use my Bushwhack as a stun, step away, 
get safe, and then once I'm safe, I'm staying at this edge of this fight, and I'm contributing, and I'm always thinking about running away or when my next spell is coming up. I'm going to make sure I'm in range to cast my spells, because I'm going to try to bushwhack this guy here in a second, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. He stepped away from trees. But that's the first kill. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's all about getting to the edge of the fight and staying there. Coming back into the fight when you have spells and running away when you don't. Uh, early on, just because it's a laning stage and we're like level three, right clicks are very important. But as the game progresses, my right clicks aren't going to matter as much because as you can see with Acorn Shot, uh, every cast of Acorn Shot is five auto attacks once it's max level. So once we're getting to the max level Acorn Shot, spending my time right clicking is not nearly as efficient as just casting Acorn Shot. So even if I'm trying to do damage, I'm really not doing the right clicks in the late game. I've said that a bunch. Let's jump to the next clip. Uh, let's see, 514. And yeah, let's go back a little later. So, uh, been pretty even in lane. We've killed them once or twice. But this is a good... So, Bushwhack uh, can be a, a good setup stun. But for the most part, it's really a follow-up stun. And that's the most efficient way to use it. So Wraith King gets a stun off, and as you can see, look at this carding and reticle. You can see a little bit of it when I cast it because there's an animation for the circle of Bushwhack. But if you see here, I'm aiming just to get the tree in the circle and to keep him near my Wraith King. So I'm targeting it so that I'm, I want him to stay as close to Wraith King as possible. And, you know, I, if he was further away, I could have aimed at a little lower sort of thing, but I'm just aiming to tether him back to this tree. So the Wraith can get more auto attacks. And boop, he's dead, right? And you can see there at the last second, I even used my Scurry to uh, to make sure I got that last auto attack in because Scurry gives you the move speed. Let's talk about Scurry. Scurry, um, when activated, gives move speed. While passive, if you're next to trees, you get the evasion portion. The, uh, oh, what, it doesn't even tell me how much the evasion is. I'm not seeing here, oh, bottom there, 15% evasion. So this first point we get in, like, we're just getting one value point to begin with. 15% evasion while next to trees. That can save your life uh, fairly frequently, just because you have a low health pool. Uh, you don't have to be in the trees. You just have to be near them. So you want to live on the edge of the trees, because if you use Scurry to go into the tree line, you only have two charges. So if you want to use one to go into the tree line and it ends, you're going to be stuck in the trees uh, half the time, unless you use your second charge to get out. But you always want to be keeping one charge up, just in case you need to scurry away uh, to save your own life, right? So let's just watch this one more time. This is just uh, a normal normal case of, hey, I'm, I'm staying back, I'm staying safe until we're in a position to, to get a kill or whatnot. Because you have the kit where you got the speed, you've got range, and you're just here to support other people. Uh, Hoodwink is not a solo kill kind of person most of the time. Uh, don't rely on being able to, to solo people. Rely on going with one other person and either following up their stuns or setting up for them to kill someone. You're you're just here to keep stuff in range, slowed, and uh, eventually broken for your, your team to kill. Uh, let's go to uh, nine minutes. This one will showcase all of the spells of Hoodwink. So, as you can see, we've got a bunch more kills here. Uh, we're doing fairly well. Anti-Mage has rotated up here to this lane. We've seen him a couple times, so I know he's around. But, uh, as you can see, I see that uh, my Wraith King's getting gone on. So, I missed the Bushwhack there, but that Bushwhack is just, if he rolls in or he walks a little closer, I want to make sure that he gets stunned. The, uh, the acorn shot will bounce to, to creeps, to heroes, that sort of thing. So I'm making sure that I'm I'm trying to cast it when it will bounce. Because I get a lot more value out of it. And I see this witch doctor coming around the tree line. You don't want to be next to tree lines for uh, hoodwinks, right? Crap, animage comes in. Blast me. I'm, I'm waiting for that. I have this, uh, this scurry charge ready, right? I haven't used this one yet. I haven't used it to go chase down a kill or anything. But as soon as I get gone on, I use it to go into the tree line where Anti-Mage can't chase me. Wind up my ult, because they none, no one sees me or knows where I'm at. They expect I'm just walking through the trees. Get the kill. I still have one more scurry charge. Go find that Anti-Mage. Oh, hello. 
You do not want to fight in the tree line against a Hoodwink. That is, uh, this is where Hoodwink lives. This is why the laning stage is great for Hoodwink and, uh, some other territories you fight in. Kind of like Tree and Protector, except for, uh, Hoodwink has the ability to create her own trees. So, uh, early on, we're going to keep Acorn Shot not auto-casting. Later, we're basically going to keep it in auto-cast mode most of the time. You can finesse it when, you're, when you've got practice between switching between the two, but I recommend for the first couple games you play Hoodwink, just once you leave the laning stage, set it to auto-cast, especially when you have it on max, uh, max level, because what the auto-cast does, instead of it'll take one of the hits and turn it into planting a tree, and you need the tree for bushwhack to work, so in the late game, once you have this, or in the mid game and on, once you have Acorn Shot leveled up, you will cast Acorn Shot in a location to plant a tree and then bushwhack, bushwhack in the same spot to tether everyone to that tree. And all that does is consumes one of the bounces of Acorn Shot to make the tree. Uh, so you're losing just a little bit of damage to guarantee the stun. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I think I, I said that well. I, uh... Where are we at? Let's go look at the item build for a second and, uh, and see where we're at here. Do, 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 do. So early on, max acorn shot, mainly for the range. Harass is nice. Uh, bushwhack is next. Uh, you get more damage and more stun duration. It's really the stun duration we're looking for because we're, we're trying to set up. We're either trying to save our teammates or set up for kills. And I'll, I'll have a really good fight here after the next video. And then, then just that one point in the scurry. Uh, sharpshooter. So sharpshooter is a windup. Uh, you have to, you can manually release it. I recommend releasing it before the five seconds most of the time because uh, it winds up for five seconds before it auto releases, but it gets to max damage at three seconds. And honestly, a lot of the time I'll release it at like one or two, depending, because really what you want to do is release sharpshooter right before your stun ends on bushwhack. Because the combo is acorn shot to plant a tree, bushwhack to stun them to the tree, and as, as soon as you've got bushwhack in the air, you're going to start winding up your sharpshooter. And then what you do is you release the sharpshooter right before your bushwhack ends because you know where they're standing, they're stunned there, they're not going to move. You want to get as much damage, guaranteed damage on them as possible. You don't want to risk them, you don't want to risk a miss for more damage. You know what I mean? That's a... That's a, a low reward, high risk situation. So you're basically, you, you'll wind up sharpshooter until the enemy has a chance to move and you just release it right before then. It takes a little practice. And that's why we, we level up this bushwhack next is because it gets a longer stun time, which means we can wind up the sharpshooter longer and we get it maxed out right before we get our second point in sharpshooter. So we're almost guaranteed to get to the, the 900 damage max damage there. You'll get a little less than it because it's only a two and a half second stun. Um, and the items, I didn't talk about that. So in the lane, we're just looking for regen. Uh, I don't need to trade with the opponent well. Uh, in that last game, uh, I had a null talisman. And for some reason, I don't have it in the guide here. I should probably update the guide. Uh, I did enjoy having the null talisman early on. Uh, not quite as required. I think the reason I got it is because... I knew I was going to trade a lot with the um, the the Zeus, and I wanted just a little more a uh, little more stats and a little more regen because I was going to be casting a little more. I don't remember. Anyway, I recommend one Null Talisman. Um, the some basic item here is you do run through mana pretty fast, and eventually you'll turn this into an Aether Lens most of the time. But coming out of lane, you just want mana boots and stick, maybe a Null. Uh, Null's a little greedy, but uh, for the most part, the mana boots will give you enough mana for all your spells a couple times in a fight early on. And eventually we're going to build into uh, a Falcon Blade for a little more mana regen. It's the health and the mana regen are the things you want on this Falcon Blade because we're super squishy. We want to make sure we stay alive long enough in fights to get all our spells off and we need enough mana to get all the spells off a couple times in a fight uh, because there's such short cooldown. So that's really all we're looking for is just enough mana to get all our spells off in each fight. Um, and let's go look at one of the cooler fights. Probably my favorite fight. Is this the right one? No, this is, sorry. This is not the, the one I'm thinking of, but let's, let's load this up here. So we played a game about more. 
Get some more kills. I think we're looking for what, 21 minutes here. Uh, we're doing fairly well. So this isn't a game of, hey, we're, we made a comeback. This is a game of, we got ahead, we stayed ahead. So I'm uh, I'm holding mid for a bit. Uh, fight's breaking up top. I hear my, my team on comms saying stuff. So I, I'm going to scramble to the top here. You can see me and Lich are both going to teleport in. The nice thing about Hoodwinks, like I said, you have two charges of the Scurry. So the first one, I used to get through this tree line and get to the fight as quick as possible. Wraith King just rezzed, and I need to save this Wraith King because he's in trouble. He's screaming, help, help, help. Bushwhack. Sharpshooter. And you see, I, I did not charge the Sharpshooter up to max damage. I released the Sharpshooter the moment. I'm going to slow this down here. He's stunned. I'm watching the stun bar. And I gotta release it before the stun ends. I don't care if that's gonna kill him or not. I just wanna make sure that I get my damage in. And if it's a target that you need to break, sometimes you'll just do a quick cast and instant release it just to break the target for your team. Because Sharpshooter uh, applies break to the target as well. Um, but as you can see, the, so the, sorry, the, the, one of the main things I wanted to show here. So I come into the fight, I'm running in because I'm really mobile. I get my spells off here. And as soon as my spells are all on cooldown, see, I got seven seconds here. So for seven seconds, I'm not coming in and auto-attacking. I'm not letting the enemy see where I'm at. I'm going through the tree line. I'm walking away. And now when they're down to like these two or three seconds, you see me coming back down here reassessing. Okay, do I need to kill anyone? No, I don't. We're walking away. Let's get out of here. I don't want to show. I don't want to be seen. And your abilities are such a short cooldown that you'll you'll cast them all, you'll walk away for a couple seconds, you'll come back in, you'll cast them all, you'll walk away. You're just always re-engaging in the fight. Sorry, I'm in a little babbly mood here. This video is taking a little longer than I meant. Um, I think uh, we'll look at the next clip and then we'll look at items uh, a little more here. So the next clip is 2520. This is the one that I really like. I made a little video clip for my friends. Oops, I'm clicking on the wrong button here. Apologize. 2520. Okay, so we just killed a couple bodies. We're spreading back out. Wraith King's gonna come here to mid. And I'm gonna do a little shopping. You can't see it in the replay, but uh, I'm about to open up my my shopping menu here. Bloop, and I'm doing some shopping while it's a little safe in the downtime. Uh... Oh crap, Wraith King's in trouble. He's getting gone on. So I scurry to get into the fight as quick as possible. Bushwhack. Mmm, beautiful bushwhack. Keep everyone stunned, give them space to walk away. Animated Chase is in. I'm still running until my spells are coming off. And you see, I started casting that right before my spells came off cooldown. Get him. And I follow up stun here. So this is follow up stun. As you can see, I've got Acorn shot on autocast. Because I need to plant this tree. And I'm I'm honestly, I'm just clicking the both buttons in the same spot. QW. Just QW really fast. Because I want to get the stun as quick as possible. So you see the, the bull is coming in here for the stun. I don't need it. But the idea is I want it to land right before the Wraith King stun ends. There's like a split second where he might have cast something. But Bushwhack is really good follow-up stun. So you got to make sure you're in range of your team. That as soon as they, you know, do their stun... You're in range to land yours. And landing yours sometimes requires that acorn shot first, which both of these do have a travel distance and a travel time. So you got to be a little premature. Like, you got to go a little earlier than if, you know, you were like a shadow shaman or something. Like, there is travel time for both these stuns. And eventually you're going to get cast range items. So there's even more travel time. You know what I mean? Like, you got to be preemptive with these. So saved his life. We're super happy about it. It's, it's amazing. Yay, team. Go us. Um, so let's go talk about items. So when you're first getting into Hoodwink, I recommend trying a game where you go Maelstrom and a game where you go Aether Lens and preferably a game where you go both. Uh, Maelstrom is definitely a situational item, but it's, it's really fun to play with because your acorn shot can trigger on it. So you can clear waves really well from the, like you're, you're in the tree line. You just cast an acorn shot at the wave. It's cleared. No one saw you. You walk away. Problem is the maelstrom will, will direct the enemy to you because it's, it's triggered from your location. So you got to be careful on that. 
whenever it triggers, it, it starts from where you're at and goes to the target. So there's this big blue line pointing to you in the tree line saying, hey, this is where Hoodwink is. So you got to be a little careful with that. But I got a couple items here that are all about the on hits. Uh, Desolator is pretty nice because you can get uh, the, the trigger on the whole enemy team or whoever's grouped up in the area. Same thing for Mage Slayer. If you're trying to reduce the, the damage of the enemies, this one's this one can be pretty useful because you can hit a lot of targets with it all at once because Acorn Shot uses your a uh, your attack modifiers. So Maelstrom, Mage Slayer, and Desolator, and Daedalus are all about maximizing the impact of your, your Acorn Shot. Daedalus is super greedy, but sometimes your team just needs more damage in a fight. Uh, and since you cast a lot of spells, normally I'd get this after the Octarine Core, uh, just because you have more casts of Acorn Shot. But once you get Daedalus, you're, like I said, you're not walking in and right-clicking. You're just casting Acorn Shot. I, I know I'm babbling about this. Or I'm, I'm beating a dead horse here a little. Um, Shard creates a decoy. This one's really nice for making the... Uh, if you want to be a little more slippery and make the opponents kind of hesitate to, to go on you. Uh, because what happens is you throw a decoy out a couple times, they go on it, they get bushwhacked, they're like, oh crap, I don't want to go on that anymore. And then that makes it safer for the real you to walk around, because they don't know if it's a decoy or not. So this kind of just says, hey, don't target me anymore. Um, gem's super nice. Uh, you do have flying vision. Um, I didn't mention that earlier. So your acorn shot, you can plant a tree on pillars, and that'll give vision of the pillar. Uh, so that's good for just early game warding or... Uh, some gem usages. Uh, and if you're playing the edges of the fight really well, you, you're not at a high risk of losing the gem. Uh, and since you do have some CC, that, that gives you a chance to stun targets. Um, Ags is a boomerang. I, I personally don't enjoy it, but it is a damage multiplier for the team. Uh, so that can be really useful. It's, it's really expensive for, for a very narrow effect. So I'd recommend this once you're used to the character a lot. Uh, and then, of course, our four staff were not really in the fight really close very often, so I don't necessarily recommend four staffs or glimmer capes like a normal support. But you are normally pretty close to use a lotus orb when it's needed. I know those are all kind of in the same range and usefulness, but uh, I do find that uh, I'm in range to dispel someone a lot more often than I am to four staff them. Uh, so, yes, you can still try the four staffs and the glimmer capes, but I'd recommend trying lotus orb first. Uh, if there's a game that requires it. And then, yeah, of course, Aeon Disc, because you're super duper squishy. And your most important spells are your stun and your break, not the damage portion of them. So even if this triggers, you're you're still fine to cast all your spells without without pause or hesitation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That game I went uh I went Octarine Core because just the more stuns I had, the better. And uh, I think I got uh, two more clips. One of them super awesome. No, we already did that one. I got one more. Just kind of show you the farming pattern for when you're trying to, to when you're trying to get up these items. The, 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 the fights are kind of lulling. You need to just farm a little bit. For me, it was the Octarine Core. So as you approach the wave, acorn shot to make a tree. If, if there's not a tree around, you got an acorn shot. And then bushwhack it and then just single target everything down. And then jungle camps are a lot easier. And you just bushwhack first and then acorn shot. So I'll bushwhack them, stun them all up so they don't attack me and I don't take any damage. And just acorn shot them down. And you have uh, low enough cooldown that you'll basically just wait for it to come off cooldown before you attack, uh, do a camp. And just acorn shot the highest damage target because you want to get as many bounces into it as possible and it doesn't increase in damage per bounce or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, I babbled enough about this. Let me just go check all the screens, make sure we set everything I wanted to. Uh, Hoodwink is a spellcaster, a skirmisher, like edges of the fight. Cast your spells. You're not a right clicker. You're not, uh, you don't want to be seen in fights. You want to be as slippery as possible because you're super squishy. Yes, you have some evasion, but your, your health total is not, not the highest and, your escape is speed. It's not dispels. It's not jumps. It's not anything like that. Like you do not want to be seen and targeted. Um, yep. 
items you don't need much. I recommend uh, Falcon Blade just because it, the damage is useful for the Acorn Shot. Not really what your focus is, but the health and the mana regen uh, are very important to you. And you don't need much to be impactful early on. And then kind of extend to one of these other items here. And, uh, oh, we didn't talk about talents. Um, bushwhack cooldown. The most important thing about the bushwhack cooldown is it brings the cooldown of bushwhack down to the same of acorn shot. Acorn shot at max level is 10 seconds. Bushwhack is 14. As soon as you get this level 10 talent, which comes in here in the, you know, when you're skilling up bushwhack, they'll be the same cooldown. Like I said, once, once either acorns maxed and this is reducing cooldown, you're casting them together all the time, every time. Because the ranges are the same, they synergize well together, and uh, yeah, I, I babbled about that. Um, Acorn Shout Bounces are super nice if you have anything that's triggering off the attacks. Otherwise, Camouflage, the, the sad thing about Camouflage is you have to stand still for it to work. And I find myself just moving too much to the squirrel. I don't need to stand still to ambush someone, I want to be on the move so that they don't find me. So I... Camouflage is nice, but it's not nearly as good as the Treant because the Treant can be invisible and moving, whereas Hoodwink has to stand still for the invis, so I don't recommend it. Uh, and then, of course, you'll have to decide whether your team needs armor corruption or you just need those quicker sharpshooters. And like I said, the, the normally you're ending the sharpshooter early because of your stun duration. So the nice thing about this is it makes it so that you can get to that max damage in your ultimate. So if you know you're landing a lot of ultimates, get this one just so that you're doing more damage with those ultimates. Uh, because you should never be waiting for the max charge on the ult. You should be waiting for the max duration of the stuns. So keep, yeah, anyway. And then, of course, uh, more acorn shot charges. I, I don't really recommend that one because... You're really only using Acorn Shot every time you Bushwhack. So two charges of the shot doesn't really make much sense. Uh, but Bushwhack Radius, I mean, the more people you stun, the better, right? And you have to remember with this Bushwhack stun, it also sets their vision to zero. And when someone's vision is set to zero, they panic. Like, they're... <laughs> like, I don't know if you've been stunned by Hoodwing before, but when your, your character vision goes to zero and you're all alone out there and you're like, ah, crap, I don't know what's going on. Like, your, your brain just instant trigger of like, ah, crap, I'm dying. So the more people you can do that to, the better. Uh, yeah, I've babbled enough. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you later. Peace.